IPR is increasing, especially in developing countries. As we know, uh, IPRs have various verticals, including patent, trademark, design, and copyright. And of course, we are familiar with these words, uh, though I'm quite doubtful. How many, of us, how many of us have understood the real significance of these words? And the term IPR has much importance in the academic circle, uh, with the increasing focus on innovation, research, and cross-border collaborations. Need to learn about intellectual property rights uh, to safeguard their inventions has increased among the students and scholars. So the foundational awareness regarding the rights of a creator needs to be developed in students. The need to have a culture of respecting the rights of a creator uh, and giving due credit uh, while using someone else's creation should be clearly imparted to all concerned. Uh, this session is aimed to provide intellectual property rights awareness for teachers, research scholars, and students here. And we have a very learned and experienced person as our distinguished guest. Uh, she has good experience uh, working in intellectual property office and the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, Government of India. Uh, she can elaborate more on the topic, and I am sure uh, all of us will be benefited by her talk. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am, uh, for the uh, introduction. Uh, so first of all, I hope uh, that my screen is visible. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, uh, before uh, starting the session, I would like to thank uh, uh, the authorities of uh, uh, MES College Punani, especially the uh, principal, uh, Dr. V. U. Amira, and uh, Dr. P. Jairam, president uh, and coordinator of IIC, and uh, uh, Ms. Samya Ma'am, uh, the uh, IPR coordinator of uh, MES College for inviting me to deliver uh, this uh, session on intellectual property rights. Uh, as uh, rightly pointed out by uh, Ms. Samya, this is my second session, uh, I believe, for uh, uh, MES College in this uh, particular year. And I hope that uh, you all will find this session informative. Uh, so, uh, mainly today we'll be discussing about uh, intellectual property rights and the protection of IPR in India. So first, we'll have a general overview about intellectual property rights. Uh, then we'll uh, discuss the different IPRs in detail. Uh, and at the end, I'll just uh, summarize uh, the uh, different IPRs. So basically, uh, I hope that by the end of this session, you'll gain an insight into uh, the different types of intellectual property rights and also uh, the significance of uh, IPR uh, in general uh, as well as uh, in particularly uh, with regard to the different uh, the scope that is covered in different IPRs. Okay. So first and foremost, we need to know what an intellectual property is. We will start from the basics. Uh, an intellectual uh, property. Ma'am, no, excuse, excuse me, ma'am. Ma yes, ma uh, can you please make it a, uh, in uh, slide slideshow mode? Okay, it is not. Uh, okay. Is it in uh, appearing in slideshow mode now, ma'am? Uh, it's not in a slideshow mode, ma'am. Okay, okay. Uh, we, okay. we can uh, uh, we can see the screen, but it is uh, not in a slideshow mode. Okay, okay. Uh, we can just. Uh, is it okay now? Uh, 
ma'am is it okay now like is it now in slide show mode ah uh, yes yes okay 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 yeah so uh, first we'll be uh, we'll just see what an intellectual property is uh, so as the name itself suggests intellectual property is the creation of human intellect or human mind uh, anything that is born out of your uh, mind can be referred to as an intellectual property now it can be in the form of a uh, scientific innovation so suppose you have invented a new product or a new process then that that will be uh, considered as your intellectual property similarly the ornamental design of a product uh, if you have designed if you have a new design for a product then that will also be considered as your intellectual property then any kind of creative work for example a novel or a short story that you have written or a poem that you have composed Uh, or it can also be in the form of a, a song a musical composition so all this will come under intellectual property now it can even be in the form of a uh, trade name or a brand logo that you might have uh, designed for your uh, brand so all these uh, will come under the category of intellectual property anything that is born out of your intellect so what are intellectual property rights these are the legal rights that are conferred on such intellectual property uh, so uh, once you create uh, something using your human uh, using your intellect uh, you uh, automatically get some legal rights over your creation so these uh, rights are called intellectual property rights so uh, not all of these iprs are automatic in nature some of them you need to register okay some of them you need to Uh, uh like obtain a registration only then you will you can be uh, called as the rightful owner so we'll uh, while discussing the different types of ipr we will see that which of these iprs are automatic in nature and which of these iprs are uh, need to be registered okay so before uh, moving into the different types of iprs we'll uh, first of all uh, try to understand the significance of iprs so every uh, now and then you keep on hearing about ipr especially uh, since the past few years as uh, our honorable principal uh, ma'am also told that uh, the importance of innovation uh, has been increasing like uh, increasingly uh, you are hearing these terms like innovation uh, intellectual property all these terms are being heard day by day so why is why has this become so much important why is it uh, so important for a creator to secure an ipr for his or her creation first and foremost as you can see here it offers protection for his creation now suppose uh, you have written a poem okay and if somebody else uh, tries to copy your poem and publish that particular uh, piece of poem as uh, their own then how will you feel you will feel deceived right uh, it it was basically your uh, original creation and somebody else Uh, tampered with it so in order to avoid such uh, instances uh, you have to secure an ipr for your creation that is how it offers that is how an ipr offers protection for your creation uh, basically by excluding others from utilizing commercializing and earning from your creation so this is the basic idea uh, behind uh, securing an intellectual property right for your creation it basically helps you uh use your creation uh, commercially without the fear of copying by others so this uh, ipr will uh, ensure that others are not uh, it will basically prevent others from uh, using your creation in an unauthorized manner now uh, these are some more points which uh, uh, emphasize the importance of ipr first and foremost it provides security for your intangible intellectual assets now uh, uh, actually uh, this intellectual property is a type of property now there is a different it, it basically falls under intangible property intangible means anything that cannot be touched or felt there is a different uh, category of property called tangible property so all the things that you see around you the physical uh, things that you own for example the house that you live in or uh, the piece of land that you own whether it is agricultural land commercial land whatever the jewelry that you own the uh, your car or the uh, scooter or whatever vehicle the bicycle whatever you own all this will come under tangible property 
because they can be touched or felt so once you uh, like in order to show your ownership over such tangible property what will you do you will basically register it in your name once you purchase a piece of land you will register it in your name in the same way once you create something using your intellect and using your creativity uh, you have to secure a registration for the same that is how uh, the ipr will provide uh, a security for your intangible intellectual asset uh, now this is uh, this has become extremely important in today's day and age uh, when like in today's uh, digital era the information security has also become very critical it has become uh, like it has become very important to secure uh, even the digital information that you have okay because uh, there are many such instances of infringement where uh, the uh, information is not at all secure and people uh, have easy access to uh, information so especially in this digital era uh, securing your intellectual property has become extremely important now uh, secondly it uh, it is a it acts as a source of revenue uh, so there are multiple sources of revenue uh, connected with intellectual property rights so a few sources of revenue are listed here for example licensing now uh, suppose you have developed a new technology but uh, you feel that you do not have the uh, legal acumen or the uh, business acumen to market that particular technology so what you can do is you can approach a company which is already established in that particular field then uh, that company can manufacture uh, that means can basically uh, make use of your technology it can manufacture a product and it can market that product so in this way uh, you are basically licensing your technology to a company so uh, how can you earn you can earn in the form of royalty like whenever the company makes a sale for uh, your particular product it will have to pay some fee uh, out of the profits that it is gain uh, and also it has to uh, pay some amount in the form of a licensing fee so this is how you earn through licensing then another uh, common uh, way of earning is through technology transfer so you all must have heard about this term technology transfer that uh, uh, for example if a particular company has developed some uh, sort of technology then uh, they can have a technology transfer agreement with a different uh, company in order to transfer uh, that particular technology for a certain period of time so again through this agreement they can earn then uh, royalty royalty i have already uh, mentioned about royalty royalty the term comes across in the field of copyright also so you must have you must have heard the term royalty more in connection with copyright so whenever uh, somebody is using uh, a copyrighted material then they have to pay royalty to the original owner of that particular uh, material so that is how uh, so these are different streams of revenue associated with ipr then uh, the intellectual property rights fosters innovation in different fields ipr helps companies protect their investments in innovation so uh, an example of this can be uh, we know that pharmaceutical companies or uh, this uh, uh, drug companies uh, they invest a lot of money in research and development so uh, patents are basically a way in uh, patents are basically a way through which they recover their investments in r&d so once they develop a new product a, a new medicine for example uh, they uh, obtain a patent for it and uh, that patent will basically uh, ensure that whatever they have invested in r&d they can recover it uh, through a reasonable amount of profit and uh, if this patent ex system was not there then uh, anybody else can reverse engineer that particular product and they can uh, develop develop it and they can uh, manufacture it and launch it in the market then the original company who de which developed the product will no longer have an incentive for investment that is why we say that uh, patents act as an in incentive for investment then uh, ipr also rewards individual creativity and innovation so uh, from an individual standpoint uh, you can say that securing an ipr for example uh, as far as uh, students and uh, teachers are concerned or as far as uh, research professionals are concerned uh, when they uh, get a patent for their uh, project or for their invention and certainly it is a matter of pride for them and it has it adds uh, some value to their academic profile 
so that was the brief introduction about ipr so now we'll move on to the uh, uh, details of the different types of ipr so first we'll see patents now uh, here you can see a visualization of the patent applications that were filed in the top 10 patent offices of the world so this data has been taken from the wipo database wipo is world intellectual property organization so here you can see that uh, and this is for the year uh, 2020 i suppose uh, so here you can see that the most number of patent applications were filed in china and india is only on the seventh number right so uh, we know that in terms of population india is uh, next to china right india is the uh, second largest in terms of population and also in terms of demographics also the population of youngsters in india is very high still uh, we can see that india is only at the seventh number in terms of the total number of patent applications filed annually so what can be the reason for this you have to think so there needs to be uh, more and more innovation you need to think innovatively and you need to uh, file like once you get an idea or once you develop something you immediately need to uh, protect your uh, idea using uh, by filing the appropriate IPR. Now here recently it was in news that the uh, innovation global innovation index ranking uh, India has improved uh, to 46th position uh, as per 2021 and in, you can see that in 2015 uh, India was at the 81st position so slowly and steadily the improvement is uh, taking place uh, however, uh, uh, we still have to uh, go a long way you know, uh, in order to uh, get to the top, right? So certainly, uh, you need to be more and more aware about uh, innovation and the ways in which you can protect your innovation. So what is patent? A patent is basically an exclusive right that is granted by the government to a person or an organization. So, uh, what are the exclusive rights that are granted through patent? It basically gives the right to stop others from making, selling, distributing and importing an invention within the territory of the country in which it is granted. So, here uh, there are a few things which you need to keep in mind. First and foremost, it is an exclusive right. Secondly, uh, it, is grant it is a territorial right. It is valid only within the territory of the country in which it is granted. So if you get a uh, if you get an Indian patent, then uh, you will uh, receive exclusive rights over your invention only within the territory of India. If you have to uh, like if you have to get a patent somewhere like if you have to uh, obtain exclusive rights over your invention in a different country, say for example in US, then you need to file a US patent and you need to obtain a US patent. Then the next point is that it is valid for a limited period. So in India, the term of a patent is 20 years. So what does this mean? This means that uh, the exclusive rights and privileges over your invention will be valid only for a period of 20 years from the date of filing of the patent application. So once this 20 year period is uh, over, you will no longer have exclusive rights over this invention. So the invention will, uh, be, uh, will become available in public domain. It can be freely used and commercialized by anyone, anybody among the public. Now, in exchange for such exclusive privileges, you have to disclose your invention clearly and completely in a patent specification. And this specification should be such that anyone having average skill in the art can reproduce the invention from the specification alone. Then uh, lastly, the patent uh, system in India is governed by the Patents Act 1970. So this is the legal framework that governs patenting in India. Now, before uh, moving to the details of patents, we need to know what an invention is. So, the uh, all wherever you see such sections mentioned in brackets, all these sections refer to the corresponding act. So, since here we are discussing about patents, the uh, sections refer to the sec uh, Patents Act, right? So, uh, this is, uh, as per Patents Act, an invention is defined as a product or process which satisfies three main criteria. So, what are the three criteria? First is novelty. Novelty means new, newness. Okay. That is, uh, puduma, puduma. That is simple language. 
എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു പുതുമ ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കണം സെക്കൻഡ്ലി ഇൻവെൻറ്റീവ് സ്റ്റെപ്പ് സോ നൗ യു തിങ്ക് ദാറ്റ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് ദ ഡിഫറൻസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ഇൻവെൻറ്റീവ് സ്റ്റെപ്പ് ആൻഡ് നോവൽറ്റി സോ ദ ഡിഫറൻസ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് നോട്ട് ഓൺലി ഷുഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാവ് സംതിങ് ന്യൂ ബട്ട് ദ ഫ്യൂ ദ ന്യൂ ഫീച്ചർ ഷുഡ് ബി സച്ച് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ടെക്നോളജിക്കലി അഡ്വാൻസ് ഓവർ ദി എക്സിസ്റ്റിംഗ് ടെക്നോളജി or it should be economically significant so it it can be either of the two either it should be technologically advanced or it uh, or it should be economically advantageous means it should be cheaper right and along with uh, any of these two it should be non obvious non obvious varnal uh, it it should not be something which can be easily thought of by a person who is working in that particular field അപ്പോ ആ ഫീൽഡിൽ വർക്ക് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരാളെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആ ഫീൽഡിൽ റിസർച്ച് ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരാളെ സംബന്ധിച്ചിടത്തോളം ഈ അതായത് ഈ ഒരു പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ഫീച്ചർ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് എന്തെങ്കിലും ടെക്നിക്കലി സുപ്പീരിയർ ആയിരിക്കണം അതാണ് ഈ ഒരു ഇതുകൊണ്ട് ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്നത് നോൺ ഒബ്വിയസ്നെസ് ഇസ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് മീൻസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇറ്റ് ഷുഡ് ബി സംതിങ് വിച്ച് ഷുഡ് വിച്ച് കെ നോട്ട് ബി ഈസിലി തോട്ട് ഓഫ് ബൈ എ പേഴ്സൺ ഹു ഇസ് സ്കിൽഡ് ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് പെർട്ടിക്കുലർ ആർട്ട് or skilled in that particular field then the third feature is quite straightforward industrial applicability it means that it should have some uh, industrial or practical utility now uh, sorry yeah so all these uh, patentability criteria they are evaluated as on the earliest filing date so earliest filing date is the date when you disclose the patent for the first time it is also called the priority date now even though your invention satisfies all the uh, be- below like before mentioned criteria uh, there are certain restrictions that are imposed on the kind of inventions that can be patented in india now what are these restrictions so uh, if your invention falls under any of these categories then it cannot be patented in india so you can just have a quick uh, glance uh, through these uh, different sections sub sections Uh, first is anything that is frivolous or contrary to well established natural laws for example uh, if somebody claims to have developed a machine which produces an output without any input so we all know that it is not possible as per the laws of physics right energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can only be transformed from one form to another so such things cannot be patented then anything that is contrary to public order or morality or which causes serious prejudice to human animal plant life or environment for example or a uh, gambling machine so it is uh, clearly contrary to public order so it is not patentable mere discovery or formulation of an abstract theory so uh, discoveries are not patentable only inventions are so if you discover a theory and if you come up with a theory and you say that you want a patent for this say then it is not possible mere discovery of a new form of a known substance without any enhancement in efficacy for example salts uh, esters ethers and other derivatives of already known uh, compounds they cannot be patented unless they result in a uh, significant increase in efficacy mere rearrangement of known devices each functioning independently for example an umbrella that is fitted with a torch so the torch is also functioning independently the umbrella is functioning independently both are not both are just physically connected they do not have any uh, interdependence uh, with regard to their functionality so such a thing cannot be patented method of agricultural horticulture farming methods are not patentable method for treatment of humans or animals are not again not patentable plants and animals in whole or any part thereof cannot be patented except for microbes microorganisms Uh, that can be patented depending upon the whether depending upon whether they satisfy the criteria patent criteria or not mathematical or business method or computer program per se or algorithms all these cannot be patented method of performing a mental act or playing game then literary musical dramatic artistic work so all this uh, this cannot be patented because it will be covered under copyright right because these are creative works they will be covered under copyright mere presentation of information then topography of ic is again not patentable because it will it is covered under a separate category of ipr which we will see in the uh, coming slides traditional knowledge so anything which is known uh, to us traditionally uh, for example the use of turmeric the healing properties of turmeric right Uh, that cannot be patented because it is something which is known to us traditionally or uh, anything that is related to yoga all this cannot be patented 
the inventions related to atomic energy are also of the patents act so now uh, we will see some interesting examples of uh, some famous uh, innovations so again you might have seen uh, this particular uh, thing in uh, cricket matches uh, this illuminating stump is uh, a recent invention not a recent it was actually introduced by icc in its matches in 2013 so before that uh, it was difficult for the umpires to judge the uh, precise moment of run outs and all so an australian uh, cricketer and uh, mechanical engineer he came up with this invention where he fitted uh, he very made use of some sensors and uh, microcontrollers in order to uh, indicate in order to uh, indicate using that led the precise moment when the bales fell off from the stumps he obtained a patent for this thing so you can see the patent drawing that is sub submitted along with his specification the patent number is also given here and you can um, note down this number and you can search it in google patents you can uh, find out the entire description and the specification that is associated with this particular invention now these are some famous uh, indian innovations so shanvac uh, b was uh, the hepatitis vaccine the affordable hepatitis vaccine that was invented in india uh, which basically uh, made uh, access to uh, uh, hepatitis vaccine Uh, easier among the uh, poor and impoverished then jaipur food is a very famous uh, category of uh, prosthetic food uh, which is again very affordable and it was invented in india now this is a very this uh, can be a very inspiring example uh, vishalini uh, she is a, a small kid i think a 6 year old kid who was recently awarded uh, pradhan mantri rashtriya bal puraskar uh for her invention she was also she also recently got a patent for her invention an automatic multifunctional life rescue flood house so she basically invented a a boat shaped uh, uh, like a, a boat which could it was basically a temporary living arrangement which could transform into a boat in order to rescue people uh, during floods so uh, with this invention she became the youngest uh, patent holder in india so this basically shows that uh, there is no age limit for innovation there is no age limit for filing a patent as well the only uh, requirement is that you need to have an invention which satisfies the patentability criteria now now we we'll move into some uh, the procedural aspects of a patent application so uh, suppose you have invented something and you need to file a patent application then what is the procedure that you should follow again there are two modes of uh, filing uh, first is physical filing wherein uh, you can submit the uh, hard copy in the appropriate patent office so in, in india basically there are four patent offices uh, delhi mumbai chennai and kolkata so each of the office is mapped to a particular jurisdiction if you belong to any of the southern states in india then you need to file a patent application in chennai office and in case of online filing uh, you can use the e comprehensive e filing portal you can register here uh, you can also uh, obtain an e sign uh, and using that e sign you can uh, proceed with the filing of the online application now we will see the different forms that need to be filed in order to uh, obtain a patent first of all uh, form 1 it includes all the uh, it is basically a formal uh requirement it includes all the details of the applicant the inventor now uh, there are two terms here applicant and inventor so generally the inventor would be the same as the applicant means the applicant would be the same as the inventor however uh, if we, if the inventor belongs to a particular uh, organization or if the inventor is a part of a particular uh, educational institution then uh, the institution will be recognized as the applicant and the individual will be recognized as the inventor then you have form 2 now earlier itself i told that in order to uh, give you such exclusive privileges the government expects you to disclose your invention in a patent specification so form 2 is nothing but the patent specification it includes all the details of your invention title background description drawings abstract and claims 
So you can see that claims is uh, itself is highlighted here because claims form the most important part of your patent specification. So what are claims? Claims are basically the uh, it, it claims are written in the form of a few numbered points and uh, they should cover all the important technical features of your invention, not the uh, advantages or anything, but the technical features of your invention. So in order to understand claims, we can, you can, uh, we can go through this simple example in order to just see how a claim uh, can be drafted. So here, uh, this is a simple uh, uh, claim for a, a simple automobile, right? Any kind of automobile. Uh, so you can see that uh, how the claim is drafted here. A self-propelled vehicle comprising a body having rotatable wheels mounted there under for enabling the said body to roll along a surface. So the surface can be a road, right? Then uh, second is an engine mounted in said carriage for producing uh, rotational energy through dash. So here, whatever mechanism this uh, engine is using, you have to mention that. For example, if it runs on, uh, if it if it is using an internal combustion engine, then uh, you can write here through the combustion of this fuel or whatever uh, mechanism. If it's an electric vehicle, then you have to uh, you have to list that particular feature here. Then uh, the third is coupling means for controllably coupling rotational energy from from said engine to said wheels. So you can see that uh, in this particular vehicle or in this particular automobile, there are three main parts. A body is there, which is attached with wheels. Then an engine is there, which produces energy using some kind of mechanism. Then you have a coupling means in order to transmit that energy to the wheels. So these three main technical features need to be uh, defined here. And uh, at the end, whereby said carriage, carriage is a body only. Uh, actually, it should be body here. So whereby said body can be self-propelled along the surface. So this is the simple example of a claim. This is how a claim should be defined to include all the major technical features of your invention. So whatever features you write in your claim, you get protection precisely for those features only. Okay, if you have missed something, uh, in your claim and if you have included that in your description you cannot claim uh, you cannot uh, claim protection for that particular feature again we'll go back to this page so there are some other forms also like form 3 uh, so earlier itself i told that patent is a territorial right so if you are filing for example if you want protection in multiple countries then you have to file patent applications in those countries so you need to furnish all those details of uh, the foreign applications that you have filed for the same invention in form 3. Form 5, which is a simple declaration. Form 18 is very important. It is called the request for examination. Unless and until you file form 18, your application will not be taken up for examination. And it needs to be filed within 48 months from the priority date. So here you can see the uh, if, uh, like fee details uh, for online filing. So again, it depends upon the type of applicant. If the applicant is, a, is an individual, a startup or small entity or an educational institution, the total fee that needs to be paid, the basic filing fee is just to pay 5,600. So this includes the fee for form one as well as for form 18. Uh, form 18 is the request for examination uh, and also if your patent specification is within 30 pages and if the number of claims is within uh, 10, up to 10, then you don't need to file any uh, fee for form 2. Otherwise, for each additional page and for each additional claim, you need to file a particular fee. Now, uh, on the other hand, if the applicant is a, a multinational company, a big company, then the total fee that needs to be paid is rupees 28,000. So here itself, you can see that the fee that should be paid by a natural person or an educational institution is just 20 percentage of that of the uh, 20 percent uh, when compared to the fee that needs to be paid by a company. So this has been done in order to encourage more and more individuals, students and uh, uh, educational institutions to come up with innovation and to file patent applications. Now, if you're opting for offline filing, you need to pay a 10% additional fee. Now, there is provision for uh, expedited examination. So, uh, this 
provision can be availed if you belong to any of these uh, categories if the applicant belongs to any of these categories so the important thing that you know, need to know here is if the applicant is a female hmm, or even in case of joint applicants if at least one applicant is a female then they can make use of this facility of expedited examination so in expedited examination your application will be examined uh, faster uh, you can say that it will be examined it will be taken up for examination uh, in a uh, in like faster uh, manner it will be examined in a faster manner so uh, this is uh, the flow uh, of uh, this is basically the process flow once you have an idea then uh, what you should do is you should conduct a patent search uh, in order to find uh, in order to find out if there are uh, inventions which are similar to your uh, idea okay uh, so in order to uh, find out that you have to conduct a patent search using any of these tools so there are several patent search engines uh, in our patent office itself is having a patent search engine called impass uh, you can easily get it on the uh, net that uh, even wipo and other patent offices are having their own patent databases that google patents is the uh, most uh, reliable uh, and free to use uh, search engine that you can make use of then uh, you can also perform a search in uh, non patent literature you can uh, uh, search in the uh, en search engines of different uh, research paper journals i triple uh, elsevier all these things then uh, once you conduct a patent search you will come uh, you will come across uh, maybe you will come across some uh, the, the kind of inventions that are similar to your uh, idea and you can get a clear idea whether your invention is satisfying the patentability criteria or not so once you uh, once you are uh, sure that your invention is uh, satisfying this patentability criteria you can safely go towards the filing of patent application so uh, there is a facility to file a provisional specification so suppose you are working on some project and you feel that it will take some time to complete so what you can do is you can secure an early priority date by filing a provisional specification uh, so in provisional you need not furnish the claims you just need to give a brief overview and once the provisional specification is filed within an year you can file the complete specification along with the com uh, along with the clearly drafted well drafted claims so the advantage is that you will uh, you can secure an early priority date and you will get a time period of an entire year to complete the research Uh, on your uh, project and you can uh, within that year you can uh, finish the work and you can find the complete specification so now we'll uh, quickly go through the steps that are involved in the processing of a patent application in india so the uh, main thing is that once an application is filed it is published in the official patent journal at the end of 18 months so this official patent journal is available on our website ip india it is an online journal and uh, uh, once it is published assuming that a request has been filed it will be taken up your application will be taken up for examination by uh, an examiner in patent office and then the examiner will basically uh, conduct the patent search and will assess the patentability of your invention he will prepare a report he or she will prepare a report and it will be put up to the controller who will then issue the first examination report so the first examination report will basically contain all objections with regard to your patent application it will uh, contain a uh, citation to documents that are related to your application uh, and it will contain an assessment of the patentability of your invention so once uh, the applicant gets this first examination report he will have a time of 6 months to file a reply uh, to the fir so once this reply is filed it will again be examined by the examiner and then depending upon the merits of the case it may proceed towards a grant or rejection so before that a hearing would be conducted uh, through a uh, video conferencing uh, or the physical hearing also can be conducted uh, so depending upon the merits of the case it will uh, either proceed towards a grant or rejection so these are some uh, basic uh, timelines that you need to take care of uh, when uh, filing a patent application so most of these we have discussed that provisional to complete you get a time period of 12 months then uh, for request for examination you get a time period of 48 months so all these are the important time limits so this is the sample of a patent certificate that is generated once your patent is granted 
so that was uh, uh, the uh, brief uh, outline of patents so now we we'll move on to design so earlier uh, patents are basically uh, connected with the uh, you know the technical aspects of a product on the other hand designs are connected with the aesthetics of a product so uh, now to understand the importance of design we have this uh, simple example actually in japan uh, there were two researchers uh, they did a simple experiment to understand uh, to to uh, know the importance of design so what they did was they uh, designed uh, two atm machines which were exactly identical uh, with regard to their functionality now the only difference was that uh, in terms of their appearance so one was uh, designed in a more aesthetic manner the buttons and the user interface was uh, designed in a much more uh, user interactive manner while the other one was rather plain and unattractive so they put both these atm machines to test among the public and uh, what they found was that the japanese uh, people they found the uh, attractive atm machine to be easier to use while well, that was not the case both the machines were exactly identical in their function the only difference was with regard to the appearance and the way in which the buttons were arranged and presented so from this experiment itself uh, we come to know the importance of design also uh, when we go to buy uh, anything like uh, for example when you are buying a smartphone okay uh, now if two if there are two smartphones which are identical with regard to their specification and and everything then the next uh, factor that comes into play is the design so the design is a very important factor so if uh, the uh, if both are identical then we tend to uh, select the uh, smartphone which looks uh, more attractive right so which is designed uh, in a more attractive manner so that is the importance of designs uh, in affecting the consumer choice now uh, the uh, designs of products uh, can cover the features of shape configuration pattern ornament composition of lines or colors that are applied to any article and are judged solely by the eye the term of a design is 10 years which is extendable up to 15 so these are all the different uh, things that can be covered under design now a uh, png uh, you uh, you must have recognized all the products that are shown here all these are manufactured by this company called png procter and gamble so this is among one of the top applicants of design applications uh, filed all over the world right so uh, for for all the different shapes of their bottles and the different uh, designs they uh, have obtained uh, design registrations all over the world most of the uh, countries of the world now uh, this is hrideshwar uh, singh bhati who is a uh, who was uh, in fact he is no more he was uh, an 8 year old student so he designed this uh, circular chess board and he obtained a design a registration for the same so with uh, this design registration he became the youngest uh, person in india to get a design registration now uh, how is this uh, ipr indicated so once uh, you get your design registered you have to show that uh, in the uh, article that you sell how by uh, marking with uh, either of these terms registered regd or rd and you have to also uh, mark the registration number the registration number that you obtain um, once your design is registered so that has to be shown so that anybody who is using your product or who is viewing your article will come to know that your uh, design is registered and it will basically uh, it will basically prevent them from uh, copying your design now uh, we'll quickly go through trademark so again i'm sure that a trademark is a very uh, might be a very uh, familiar concept for all of you it is uh, simply a mark that is capable of being represented graphically in the form of a word name logo etc so more than a uh, brand name or a logo it defines the identity of the Uh, company okay so uh, it it distinguishes the source of goods or services of one trader from those of others now uh, suppose you go to buy a shoes and when you see this adidas marking over that shoe then uh, immediately you come to know okay this is the origin of this particular shoe it is basically manufactured by this particular company 
and automatic automatically since this particular company has a reputation of its own you are also assured of its quality so this is how trademarks uh, build public goodwill public goodwill of a brand this is how they are used to enhance the uh, reputation of a brand so uh, a good trademark should basically satisfy two main uh, qualities first of all it should be distinctive so uh, it should be something that is unique uh, for example if you uh, try to coin a slogan such as go green if you try to trademark it then it might not be possible because it is it might not be a very good trademark because it is a very uh, generic uh, slogan right now this is a very uh, famous example uh, from minnal murli the scene from minnal murli where uh, tovino wears this uh, t-shirt having this uh, logo called abibas so when immediately itself we uh, recognize this that okay this is this has been copied from a very uh, well known trademark so uh, such uh, trademarks will not be uh, called as a good trademark why because they are deceptively similar to an existing mark so such marks will create confusion among the consumers now uh, trademark registration is optional now in the beginning i had told that there are certain uh, iprs there are certain uh, intellectual property rights which are automatic in nature and there are certain iprs which uh, explicitly require to be registered now patent is something which you should uh, which you it should be registered so unless and until you register a patent uh, you cannot claim uh, a complete owner, like not uh, you cannot uh, stop others from uh, copying your invention Uh, however in case of trademark uh, even if you do not register you have an ownership over your trademark uh, however uh, once you register your trademark the advantage is that uh, in case of uh, a dispute with regard to the ownership of your trademark you will have to approach court at that time the trademark registration will serve as a primary evidence in the court so uh, if you have not obtained a trademark registration then in court you need to prove first that you are the rightful owner however if you already have the registration then the uh, now the, uh, uh, the the person who was infringing your trademark he needs to prove that you are not the rightful owner that is the uh, advantage of getting your trademark registered so initially it is registered for 10 years however it can be renewed for an indefinite period of time by paying the renewal fees so this is how a trademark is indicated you might have often come across these indications in your daily life uh, on different you, have, you might have seen them on different logos or along with different brand names so this r symbol means that it is a registered trademark and the tm symbol means that either the trademark is application is pending or it is an unregistered trademark so now we we'll move on to copyright so copyright is basically indicated using this particular symbol so you all might have seen this symbol on books uh, novels and uh, other things other uh, literary works uh, more commonly so it basically means that it is a copyrighted uh, creation so uh, what is a copyright a copyright is basically the legal right that is given to the creators of original literary artistic dramatic musical uh, works and cinematographic works so it is an automatic right again uh, similar to trademark this is also here also the registration is not compulsory it is an automatic right means it comes into existence as soon as the work is created however uh, if you have a registration then it will serve as the primary evidence in a court of law in case of any dispute without protection is life of the author plus 60 years so even after the death of the author the copyright will be valid for another 60 years uh now this is the act that governs uh, copyrights in india so these are the different categories of works that are protected under copyright we have already discussed about this literary works means novels books poems short stories all this will come under literary works artistic works paintings sculptures uh, dramatic works musical works songs compositions sound recordings and movies cinematographic films now this uh, slide basically defines the copyright owner depending upon the type of work so if it's a literary or dramatic work the author will be the uh, owner if it's a musical work the composer if it's an artistic work the artist if it's a photograph then the photographer if it's a cinematographic film or sound recording the producer 
of that particular film or recording will be recognized as the copyright owner. And if it's a computer generated work, then the person who causes the work to be created will be the official copyright owner. So the next category of IPR is semiconductor IC layout design. So earlier while discussing the non-patentable inventions, there was a category called uh, topography of IC. We saw that it is not patentable. Why? Because it is covered under this particular category of IP. So this is basically intended to protect the layout designs of semiconductor ICs. So we all know what a semiconductor IC is. So the layout design is the layout of the transistors and other circuitry elements on, uh, of that particular IC. So if the uh, uh, IC layout design is, you know, in, uh, if, if it is new and original, then it can be protected under this particular category of IPR. The term of protection is 10 years. So uh, now we move on to the last category of IPR that is a geographical indication. So geographical indications are also called as invaluable treasures of incredible India. Atulya Bharat ki Amulya Nidhi. So what is a GI? A GI is basically an identity, uh, sorry, it is basically an indication that uh, identifies a product which has a specific geographical origin and which possesses certain qualities or a reputation that are due to that origin. So there are two things here. First is that the product should have uh, a specific geographical origin. It should have, it should be, it should have originated from a particular uh, unique place. Secondly, it should have certain unique qualities which should either have some unique qualities or it should have a reputation that can be attributed to its geographical origin. So these are the two main conditions that need to be satisfied for a product to be conferred with the GI tag. So often in news, uh, you might have seen uh, the that, okay, this particular product has been given a GI tag. But recently, uh, I think in uh, two, three days back only, there was a news that uh, the tribes of Odisha, uh, they, uh, Mayurbanj district, to be specific, the tribes of Mayurbanj district, they make a chutney using uh, ants. So uh, they are trying to get a GI registration for that particular uh, dish. Okay, so there are different types or different categories of products that can get GI tag. So we will see all that in the next slide. So before that, who can apply? So in all the different IPRs that we have seen up till now, uh, an individual can also apply or an association or organization can also apply. However, in this case, only an association of uh, the pro producers of that product or an organization that has been formed to uh, cater to the interests of the producers. Only they can apply, not an individual. This is logical, right? Because uh, GI tag is often conferred uh, to products that are uh, uniquely associated with a, uh, with a particular geographical location. For example, I'll give you an example. Aramula Kannadi is a product from Kerala which has a GI tag. So, uh, Aramula Kannadi is uh, manufactured by the artisans who are living uh, in, uh, in or around Aramula. So, uh, their livelihood, many of their livelihoods depend upon this particular craft. Uh, so, uh, if the registration, if the GI registration is given to an individual, then certainly it will affect their uh, livelihood, right? That is why this is given uh, GI tag, uh, like the, this can be applied for only by an organization of the producers or uh, an association of the producers and not uh, by an individual. So this is uh, the GI uh, tag, uh, which uh, GI registration that was given to Pokkali rice, which is again a very a unique variety of rice that is cultivated in Kerala, in the coastal belts of uh, Nakulam and Trishu, uh, which is highly saline tolerant. So. Uh, once a GI tag is conferred, it basically enhances the commercial value of that particular product and certainly it will benefit the uh, producers who are uh, engaged in the production of that particular product. And uh, at the same time, it also helps the consumers uh, get the authentic goods, right? Uh, because uh, we often see that uh, like when we are going uh, as a tourist to uh, certain places, we are often uh, deceived by uh, people try to sell fake goods, right? Uh, so uh, this GI tag also ensures that uh, consumers uh, also get uh, authentic goods and only uh, the people who are uh, uh, 
the actual producers of the product benefit from the sale uh, or the reputation that is associated with such products so here you can see uh, several examples of uh, products that have been given gi tag like alappi green cardamom tirur vetilla nagpur orange darjeeling tea was in fact the first uh, product uh, in india to get a gi tag makrana marble uh, from rajasthan which, which is even used in uh, taj mahal kanchipuram silk Uh, now uh, you have seen that a wide variety of products can be given GI tag, even uh, uh, handloom sarees of Kerala. Then uh, artistic works can also be given, like these cut puthlis of Rajasthan. Agricultural products can also be given, like the earlier saw, pukali rice, nagpur orange. So uh, that was all about uh, GI. Now we will quickly summarize the different uh, types of uh, IPR. So here in this table, you can see the uh, different IPRs that we discussed up till now. The type of work that is protected by each, and uh, the duration of each type of IPR. So in patents, the duration is twenty years. Designs uh, are basically intended to protect the aesthetics or ornamental aspects of an article or product. The total term is uh, ten. Uh, it can be extended up to fifteen years. trademarks the term is indefinite so it is initially registrable for 10 years however it can be uh, extended indefinitely similarly gi also initially for 10 years but it can can be renewed for an indefinite period of time copyright the lifetime of the author plus 60 years and si cld for unique and distinctive ic layouts uh, and the term is 10 years so this is basically a chart which shows the uh, uh different uh, offices uh, these are act, these are all the branch offices of uh, intellectual property office so uh, the uh, you can see that patents patents can be uh, registered in any of the four offices kolkata delhi chennai mumbai however design office is located in kolkata only then trademark registry is also located in all the four offices along with that in ahmedabad also it is there now geographical indication registry is located in chennai si cld and copyright registries are located in delhi so uh, these are some points to remember first protect then publish so most often uh, researchers or uh, faculty uh, uh, students even what they try to do is they try to publish a paper research paper and then uh, then only they think about patenting however uh, that is not generally the correct procedure what you should do is you should file a patent application first and then you should go for publication right because once you go for publication once you publish your uh, paper it uh, becomes uh, accessible to the uh, scientific community right so anybody else can uh, make use of your invention they can uh, make some minor modifications and they can go for filing of a patent application before you Uh, file an application so in order to avoid such circumstances it is always better to first go for filing and then uh, like first to go for uh, filing of patent and then only think about publication then uh, these rights are territorial in nature registration is done by sovereign authority and the rights are valid for a limited period of time then uh, no automatic relief is given you need to file an infringement suit Uh, in court in order to uh, get some relief or get some damages so this is uh, again a very simple example of how a single product itself can have multiple iprs associated with it so as you can see here the canon camera the uh, technical aspects of this uh, camera such as the autofocus mechanism etc will be covered under a patent then uh, the design of this particular product will be uh, registered as a design the external appearance then the trademark the canon trademark which appears on the product uh, it is it will certainly be registered as a trademark so this is how uh, like all the different products that we use around uh, that we see around us and we use uh, that we make use of uh, in our daily life they all have different iprs associated with it however mostly due to lack of awareness we fail to understand the importance of uh, iprs so lastly before concluding i'll just uh, give a quick idea about the different career opportunities that are available in this field so that uh, those of you who are interested in this particular field can pursue uh, can have a look can get an idea 
so in the government sector you can opt for examiners of examiner of patents and designs uh, the basic qualification is uh, btech in case of uh, uh, engineering background students and for arts and science the uh, you need to have a pg then uh, examiner of trademark gi and examiner of copyrights so uh, these positions are open only for law graduates then so there are many other opportunities such as you can practice as a patent agent or trademark agent you can help others uh, to file patent and trademark applications then there are several fellowship opportunities available in patent facilitation centers you can also uh, practice as patent attorneys or patent analysts in private sectors so nowadays mostly most of the private companies they have uh, positions for this patent attorney and patent analyst so that was all uh, i hope that you all would have uh, got a basic idea about intellectual property rights and uh, their significance uh, in uh, research and uh, commerce ecosystems so if any of you has any query with regard to the topics that i have uh, dealt today you can ask me particularly with regard to patent if you have any doubts then please feel free to ask thank you ma'am thank you uh, very much uh, for uh, such an enlightening uh, talk now the session is uh, open for discussion if uh, the audience have any doubt you can uh, ask and you can clear the doubts hope there is no doubt or uh, there is uh, no discrepancy jaram sir hello hello sir shall we wind up yes yes yes, yes. okay uh, thank you ma'am thank you very much uh, for uh, such an interesting and uh, enlightening session hope the audience have uh, i hope the audience uh, have liked the session benefited very much and uh, now uh, i invite dr p jayaram for delivering the vote of thanks sir i think i am audible right hi yes 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 sabna ma'am welcome sabna ma'am for delivering the vote of thanks my assistant principal dr v u amira chief guest of the day devika r nayar uh, iic president dr p j ram iipr cell coordinator uh, soumya cc iic vice president salima uh, dear fellow colleagues and my dear students so we all know that ipr is a significant tool in today's era even though the origins of the intellectual property rights can be brought back to 17th or 18th centuries so uh, generally question is like why is so why is it uh, so important today so we got an answer to that question and the answer is that we can put it in a nutshell is like that uh, the risk of innovation uh, getting infringed without the knowledge of the inventor stands very high in this globalized and digitized era and we have heard from her the importance of ipr as it creates and supports high paying jobs uh, drives the economic growth and competitiveness protect consumers and their families and encourage innovation and reward the entrepreneurs through this talk we got a very lucid and clear cut idea about copyrights patents trademarks and trade secrets and all sorts of laws and forms around these protections so on behalf of iic iic of ms panani college i extend a wholehearted gratitude to you devika ma'am for a structured and informative session next i would like to thank 
Dr. Vu Amira, principal in charge for her constant support and backing for conducting programs of the sort. I extend my words of thanks to Dr. P. Jairam, IIC President, Salima, IIC Vice President, Saumia CC, IPR Coordinator, for having provided the right resource person for handling the session. At this assistance rendered to IIC of the college by uh, IIC under Ministry of Education India for conducting impact lectures on the focal theme IPR. I, I would like to extend my wholehearted gratitude to all my fellow faculties and students who made their choice to spend their valuable time with us. Thanking you all once again, I declare the winding up of this session. Thank you all. Dear participants, please uh, fill the feedback form given in the chat box.